Hi everyone, welcome to Carpe Diem Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video we'll be going over the steps for raising the mainsail. Welcome to episode 20, Raising the Mainsail. For helpful show notes and checklists, please visit www.carpediumsailing.com slash show notes. And now, let's get started. Let's review some of the parts of the mainsail as they relate to raising the sail. The leech is the aft edge of the sail. The luff is the forward edge. Draft stripes help determine the shape of the sail, and I will expand on them later in the video. Depending on specific rigging configurations, reefing lines need to be considered when raising the sail to ensure that they have not been inadvertently left secured. The outhaul tensions the foot of the sail. The Cunningham controls luff tension, and I will be talking more about luff tension a little later. The main sheet, the traveler and the boom vang control the shape and angle of the sail as wind conditions dictate. You need to be familiar with the various sail controls but we will not be getting into sail trim in this video. The step for raising the mainsail will generally be the same on all boats. What will differ is the layout. For instance, on this boat, my reefing lines and my halyards are all led aft. On some traditional boats, the uh, halyards and the reefing lines are up at the top of the, up the front, at the mast. So whatever the layout is, you may have to adapt the procedure or the steps to match your boat. The bottom line with this and any other lessons that I teach or any things we do on the boat is safety and efficiency. So I'm going to show you what my preferences are and what has worked for me. If you find that there's something else that you somebody else has shown you somewhere else that works for you and it's safe and efficient, then I'm fine with that too. The whole process will start right here at the helm. The helm is in control of the boat. So the commands to the crew come from the helm. So in this case, we're ready to raise the main. The command will be to the crew ready to raise the main. That means let's get ready to raise the main. The crew will do what they need to do to get ready in their tasks. Here at the helm, what I need to do is slow the boat, turn up into the wind. Ordinarily we do this under power. And then also because I have a good view of everything that's going on in the boat, I want to look at, again, we're talking safety and efficiency. So the main hatch should be closed and the main sheet should be hardened. The crew will do that, but as a helm or the skipper, at the back watching, supervising, it's a good thing to double check and make sure that that's done so nobody gets hurt. Upon hearing that word command from the helm, ready to raise the main, the crew in the cockpit will be doing some things here. So the first thing we're gonna do here, again, like I said before, we will confirm that the main hatch is closed so that anybody going forward isn't gonna fall down through the companionway. We're gonna make sure that the main sheet right here, the main sheet is hardened. So the main sheet is right there and this makes sure that the boom doesn't swing and knock anyone into the water. And then I'm going to basically find my halyard and get the halyard ready. At this point, I'm going to leave the main sheet on the winch until my crew member removing the sail ties is safely forward, and then I'll be removing the main sheet from the winch, putting the halyard on. As a crew member going forward, removing sail ties, again, we're going to check for safety. So make sure that the main hatch is closed, make sure that the main sheet is hardened. Um, efficiency, remove the sail ties going forward. In this, uh, on this boat, the crew member is going to stand by at the mast when the sail goes up. So we take the sail ties off as we move forward. The sail ties should be on, should be tied in with a quick release knot so that you can release them with one hand. And there's an old adage that says one hand for you, one for the boat. And that means that as I'm working, I have a nice wide stance. I'm holding on to, a, to the boom in this case, which is why it's so important to have that main sheet hardened. And then I come and stand forward of the mast so that when they ease the main sheet to raise the sail, I'm safe and out of the path of the boom. So I've been mentioning this adage of one hand for you, one for the boat. One of the reasons for that is we're now standing on the cabin top next to the boom and we're quite exposed. So we wanna minimize how much time we spend out here, ideally, Sail ties should be tied on so you can remove them with one hand, like that, while holding on with the other hand. In order to tie that sail tie in, what I like to do is have the eye facing away from me. I put the tail in through the eye, and then I pull back. 
And all we're going to do is pull this back here and then put a half hitch on the bike like this and that's it. Let's take a quick look at that one more time in slow motion. They don't have to be super tight, just enough to hold the sail and be able to undo it with one hand while holding on safely. So the jobs for the uh, crew member here in the cockpit are to look after the main sheet, the main halyard and the boom vang or the kicking strap as they call it in England. The first thing we're going to do as soon as that crew member is safely forward is we're going to ease the main sheet. As I ease the main sheet, I warn the crew easing the main. So everybody knows that the main sheet is eased and that it is now free to swing overhead, which is exactly what you want as you're raising the sail. Then I'm going to open my boom bang. I'll release the boom bang to make sure that it's not also pulling down. And the last thing I'm going to do is find my halyard, wrap it around the winch, make sure the winch is wrapped correctly, and then taking a quick look from the head of the sail to the top of the mast, making sure that the halyard has a free run and take up the slack. And at this point, I reply to my helm that I'm ready. Once I've received the replies from the crew that they're ready, I make one last check to make sure that the boat is heading upwind, and then I say, raise the main. So once I hear the word of command from the helm, raise the main, I immediately start raising the main. So I'm watching the sail go up, and I'm using proper hand position with my pinkies leading like this. I'm well braced so that I won't fall backwards, and I make sure that the sail isn't jammed on anything on the way up. I pull it most of the way up by hand, and then when I'm done, I use proper winch wrapping technique. Wrap the winch, and then I'm gonna use my handle to finish raising it, and then also to set the lock tension. At this point, the helm would be bearing away, the wind would be filling the sail a little bit, and you would be able to see and look for your correct luff tension. Correct luff tension depends on wind strength. Generally speaking, the harder the wind, the tighter the luff. Advanced sail trim goes way beyond the scope of this video, but as a cruising sailor, a good place to start is by following this advice from the new book of sail trim. A good general rule is that the tension should be enough to eliminate any small horizontal wrinkles behind the mast. If you start to see long vertical creases or wrinkles, there is too much luff tension. The draft is the deepest part of the curvature of the sail, and most sails will have stripes on the sail to help see where the draft is. According to the new book of sail trim, the draft should be at 40% of the distance from the luff to the leech. The draft will move back as the wind increases, and it is moved forward with luff tension. So once I've finished adjusting my luff tension, I'm going to take the halyard off the winch. So I take the handle out of the winch, make sure my clutch is closed, I'm going to ease the halyard off, making sure it doesn't slip. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the main sheet back on and I'm going to harden the main sheet. As I'm doing this, the boat's bearing away, either to port or starboard. In this case, we're going to pretend we're bearing out to port onto starboard tack. I secure the main sheet. So now that crew member forward can safely remove or return back to the cockpit. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flake. So you can either flake or coil a line. Personally, I like to flake my halyards and put them away. You want to minimize any lines in the cockpit underfoot that might cause a tripping or slipping hazard. For the crew member up here, again, because of the way my boat is rigged, we're going to ease the topping lift. So remember the topping lift is the line that holds the boom up when the sail is down. So in this case, we want to make sure that the topping lift is not in the way when we harden a sail, for instance, for close hauled. So as I said, the topping lift is basically the line that holds the end of the boom. So you can see, just to show you what the topping lift looks like, it goes up and it comes down. It goes up and comes down. That's all that line does. The topping lift simply holds the boom up when the sail is down. So at the helm, once the sail is up, and I see that my crew member is doing the final 
tensioning of the of the luff, I start to <clears throat> pardon me, I start to bear away one way or the other. So in this case, we're pretending that we're bearing away to port onto starboard tack, and then I would tell the crew what point of sail I'm planning to go on to. So once I've eased the topping lift here, and the main sheet is hardened, the main hatch is closed, the helm has bared away onto port tack, I then take my time moving on the windward side of the boat, make my way back into the cockpit, and I'm going to stow my sail ties. So personally, what I like to do with the sail ties is to double them over like this, and then just hang them from the binnacle or the, the wheel post, and that way they're in one place, everybody knows where they are, and if you need them in a hurry, you can find them, but they're, uh, they're not underfoot. And finally, the last step, now that I've bared away and we're under sail, is to shut off the engine, and then we're going to get ready to raise or unfurl our head sail. So in this case, we have a furling system, we're going to be unfurling our Genoa. We'll now take a look at the whole sequence in real time. It all starts with the command from the helm, ready to raise the main. Upon hearing the command, the crew close the main hatch and ensure that the main sheet is hardened. A crew member then goes forward to the mast, removing the sail ties on the way. Remember, we do that to minimize the amount of time we are exposed while working along the boom. And a further reminder that this sequence is what is followed on our boat due to the layout of the running rigging. You will have to adapt the procedure to your boat. Once the crew member is safely forward at the mast standing by the topping lift, the main sheet, boom vang, and cutting ham are eased. The main halyard is made ready by wrapping it around a winch. The clutch is opened and the crew respond, ready. The helm ensures that the boat is still head to wind and commands, raise the main. The sail is quickly raised. Note the correct hand position on the halyard and the braced body position. Once the sail can no longer be raised by hand, the crew adds wraps to the winch and grinds the sail the rest of the way up. It's important to be watching the sail go up to make sure that it's not caught on something as the mechanical advantage of the winch could easily rip the sail if it's simply hung up. The crew then sets the correct luff tension for the conditions. As the luff tension is being set, the topping lift is eased. Remember the topping lift is only there to hold the boom up when the sail is down. We do not want the topping lift to interfere with correct sail shape. The main sheet is hardened and the boat bears away to sail under mainsail and the engine is shut off. The crew member forward can now safely return to the cockpit on the windward side of the boat. Remember, one hand for you, one for the boat. The main halyard and the sail ties are stowed and the crew gets ready to unfurl or raise the headsail. New episodes go up every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. See you in our next one, where I talk about unfurling and furling the headsail. Till then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.